Hello again, everyone. Welcome to a new Let's Play. Should be kind of obvious from this little introduction, if you're familiar with it. Of course, if you've uh, seen a couple of the other recent uh, games, yes, something by Origin. What could it be? Surely that red planet there in the background had nothing to do with it. I'm sure I'm playing Wing Commander or something, right? Right? Origin and Lord British presents... Oh, I guess it's not Wing Commander. An ultimate Worlds of Adventure game. No, I'm, I'm not. Don't expect me to play Wing Commander. I'm, I'm terrible at flight sims. Martian Dreams. In a rather amusing coincidence, right as I was about ready to uh, start recording this, some friends of mine started up uh, playing uh, Space 1889. Amusing coincidence. Percival Lowell, Space Cannon to Mars. Fires tomorrow, 6 p.m. At the Columbian Exposition of 1893, astronomer Percival Lowell unveiled his Space Cannon. Before the greatest minds of his day, he proposed a mission to Mars, which would take another 120, 30 something odd years at least to get off the ground. Uh oh, that, that doesn't look good. But disaster struck! I don't think that's quite disaster, that, that looks more like sabotage to me. They were all murdered! Oh, no! It fired prematurely. You should probably see a doctor about that. The cannon discharged a day early. Whee! You know, someday people will pay for rides like that. With the leaders of the Victorian era on board. so pretty. Mars floating there in space. Now you must rescue them from the red planet. The angry red planet. It is angry, I tell you. Angry! See, it's red! Martian dreams. Alright, let's run the introduction. I guess there was a knock on my door. Come in! Damn it! British, I'm still a man! Warren, hello, what can I do for you? Oh yeah, you go by the name, uh, Johan. Did you not send for me? Ah, damn it. Never sent you any telegram. Perhaps your friend can explain this. Friend? I came alone. There's someone standing behind you. I like my poster. Ultima 6. Greetings, Avatar, Dr. Spectre. I have something you will find most interesting. Are these documents for Spelljammer? Oh, no. Hmm, papers, a map, and a book. On the Orb of the Moons. You must hurry. The greatest minds of your world and my own depend upon you. Going too fast here. Well then, let's see what we have to work with. Doctor, that's you, me, you and me with Sigmund Freud. This picture must be a hundred years old. The man on the left is Nikola Tesla, the inventor. Awesome. What can all this mean? Time travel, use of the orb of the moons. Doctor Johann Spector, December 1895. I'm not sure, Doctor, but I suggest we follow the map and find out. To Colorado we go! Sweet, we could get some pot. It is a very old looking map. That is a, some very nice scenery. Damn it, damn it, Warren, why are you making me carry everything? You better have books on Spelljammer in this bat in this pack. So the map was correct. Tesla did have a lab here. How do we begin? The book says you must face a heading thir of 37 degrees. Do you have the compass I gave you? Right here, Doctor. Man, I hope that I can change back to a woman in this at some point in this adventure. Now toss the orb eight feet in front of you. I wonder where it goes. Well, let's, let's go in and find out. Looks like a red moon gate. If these instructions are correct, it leads to the same spot in 1895. Sweet time travel! Shall we, Doctor? 
Maybe the Time Lord has something to do with it. Nah, couldn't be. He's still back in Ultima 3. I'm sure we'll never see him. Not that I've played Ultima 3. Ah, oh, look at that rotoscoping. Motion capture. Are you not ready yet, Herr Tesla? That is a terrible, terrible accent for him. Soon, Dr. Freud, soon. The electrical accelerators must be properly adjusted. And I certainly can't do an Eastern European accent. My god! Hey, guys! What's going on? Hey, you cleaned this place up. Oh, yeah, that's before it got messy. Mr. Tesla, I am Dr. Johann Spector, and my friend is the Avatar. You can call me Warren. We've traveled quite some distance to bring you this message. It claims that you gentlemen are from the future to help us in our mission. They might be anarchists here to subvert our expedition. I'm not an anarchist. Using stage magic to impress us and to cover their entrance. What do you think this is? The prestige? Whether they snuck in is easy enough to check. Mr. Garrett. Oh, is this? And how'd they get in here? Since they did not come in past you, they must have arrived from the future. What's well, that's a uh... What? You you believe your this future nonsense simply because they managed to slip past your cop cowboy? Actually, Blood, the most compelling reason to believe them is th this note. Oh, and just who wrote this compelling message? I did, Doctor. Or I will. The signature, I assure you, is genuine. No one could ever possibly imitate my signature. Perhaps you could tell us about the mission, Mr. Tesla. Two years ago, Percival Lowell assembled a scientific mission team to explore Mars, but his team has not signaled Earth in over a year. Our purpose is to find out what happened to that expedition. I thought they got trapped on, on Mars. And here is the final member of our team. Hello, Lady O. Miss Nellie Bly, meet Dr. Spectre and the Avatar. I'm delighted to meet both of you. I missed that last part. Going too fast, te text. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Bly. Now, if everyone will take a place in their space bullet, it is time for our departure. You built another giant gun? Mr. Avatar, Dr. Spectre, if you have any further questions, well, screw you. Okay, let's go ahead and create a character. As you stare out the portal, your reverie is disturbed by a distinguished middle-aged man carrying a clipboard. He sits down next to you, studying you intensely. And no, I cannot do a Vienna accent. Good day, I am Sigmund Freud. I have been meeting the other travelers. So I may know you better. I was wondering if you would mind answering a few questions. Do I have to? It's kind of relaxed here, looking out into space on our probably months-long journey to uh, the Red Planet. Since we have not been properly introduced, may I ask you... May I ask how you wish to be addressed? Well, you can call me Avatar, but if you must know... Elmandretta. Don't mind the current male appearance. A pleasure, Elmandretta. I am continuing the research that I began in Vienna prior to joining this ex expedition. Oh, that's... That's a good use of your time. First, allow me to ask you this. With which of your parents do you most closely identify? Your A, father, or B, mother? Okay, so this is the gender ch uh, choice in the game. If you identify with your father, you'll be male. If you identify with your mother, you'll be fem female. Naturally, most women see themselves as more like their mothers, while they are closer to their fathers. Yes! Finally! Gender change back! Damn you, British. I am gonna get you one of these days. Just you wait. It's coming. In fact, they see their mother as a rival for their father's affection. I don't know about that. That seems... That seems, uh... Tad much there. Mr. Father, and, fa Mr. Father of Modern Psychology, so who am I to say? Now, Elmandretta, lie back in your seat. Get completely relaxed. <sighs> Not that relaxed! Damn it! Oh, so, sorry. Try to clear your mind and respond as you think proper. A! No, 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 B! No, no, C! Personally, I do not think that you belong with us on this expedition. <laughs> you haven't seen me in action yet, sir. Does this statement A, anger you, B, frighten you, or C, neither? Because my opinion does not matter. <laughs> Your opinion does not matter, Mr. Father of Modern Psychology. 
So you feel that this interview will serve no purpose. That is unfortunate, though it will not affect the outcome. Well, that's good, I guess. If you are ready, Elmandretta, we will begin. You are once again a child. Your mother calls you in away from play with your friends. Okay, so this is the uh, these are the questions that determine what your uh, skills are. I don't know exactly how they do it. I'm just going to go with the flow. Would you A, obey and go in at once, or B, defy her wishes and remain with your friends? I will go inside at once. When we arrive on the Martian surface, we will assuredly need to explore our surroundings. Do you think that we should A, send out one of... Mm, excuse me. Uh, blood had some pretty good food back there, but left me a little gassy. Should we A, send out one as one of us as a scout, or B, travel together as a group? Well, we should travel together as a group, safety in numbers and all that. Assuming you could become an animal and live in the wilderness as you choose. Which of these would you prefer to be? Would you rather become A, a fish and live in the sea, or B, a bird and live in the clouds? Well, flying is pretty awesome. I'll take B. You are definitely more comfortable with the feminine portion of your personality than with the male portion. What? If you say so. This is probably due to the influence of your mother during childhood. I thank you for your answers, Elmetra. My research is proceeding well, and I hope to publish my findings someday. I'm sure it'll never happen. Rest assured that I will not mention you by name as an example. Sweet anonymity. Better than the internet. Okay, so we've created our character. Now we go ahead and continue game. Initializing Roland. Yay, glorious Roland audio. Done. Okay, here we are on Mars. See, it's red. It's red. That's how you know it's Mars. And we've got Elmandretta. Female. Yes, finally back to the female form again. Oh, feels good. Level 4, 600 experience points total. And it looks like my dexterity is higher than either my strength or my intelligence. I would like to get my strength up, but the dexterity is pretty good as well. Spectre! Welcome along. I'm glad you decided not to be a crazy uh, Aztec guy this time. And Nellie Bly. Nellie Bly has uh, come along as well. So, equipment-wise, Nellie has a Derringer and 20 pistol rounds. She has a wool dress, she has cotton work gloves, and women's shoes. Spectre has a wool overcoat, a muffler, cotton pants, rubber gloves, and riding boots. And I have nothing. I do have a pocket watch. It is 8 a.m. That's not helping much. Let's uh, actually go ahead and... Uh, Equip the Derringer on Nelly Bly for now. All right. So let's see who is uh, sitting in uh, the cockpit with us. You see a man. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Hey, Freud, how's it going? You see a distinguished man with a probing stare. Good Tag, Elmendrida. What may I do for you? Well, what is your name? I am Sigmund Freud. What is your job? He smiles and fishes a notebook from his pocket. I am currently studying dreams, for they are a good indication of the psychological structure of the, and personality of the dreamer. I'm sure that'll have nothing to do with the game at all. Never mind that it's called Martian Dreams. He makes a note, then says, Ja, and they tell much about the person involved. For example, many people dream that they are being chased by something they cannot see. This usually indicates... The individual is feeling oppressed by something, or has a duty to perform that is in some way unpleasant to them. What about psych? Oops. That is my chosen profession. It is psychology which has been the goal beckoning me from afar. I have begun work on theories of the structure of personalities. What well, can you tell me about your goal? Yeah, my goal is to infer or to guess at how the mental apparatus is constructed, and what forces interplay and counteract in it. You know, you would really like to uh, um, meet someone I know in a previous game. His name was Faye. 
I think you would be fascinated by him. What can you tell me about personalities? I believe that it is comprised of three components. The id, the ego, and the superego. <coughs> Sorry. Can the superego fly through the air? No? It's not very super then, is it? What about the id? We knew someone named id once in a previous game. It is a mechanism for the release of tension that is brought about by a stimulus. What can you tell me about the ego? It is a means by which one deals with reality in one's external environment. What about the superego? This is the portion of the personality that defines one's morals. Okay, well, thank you. Goodbye, Amandretta. Feel free to discuss your concerns or dreams or your dreams with me at any time. I'm, I'm sure I won't. Hey, man in white. Let's talk to you. You see a good-looking, dark young man with an intense stare. It's Tesla! All right. One of the best inventors in the world. Come, my friend. We have landed. Let us see how close my calculations were for our landing site. He strides to the window and stares out for a few seconds. He moves toward the door he moves toward the door of the capsule. Good, good, my calculations were precise as usual. We came not far from the site of the eighteen ninety three landing. Should be just east of here, within easy walking distance. The others may have important information you can use on your journey. It would be wise to speak with everyone before ex exiting the capsule. I would also check with Mr. Garrett for some utensil with which to pry open the door of the capsule. It seems to be jammed closed. Okay, well, we can do that. What can you tell me about, uh, 1893? Indeed, it is of paramount importance that, we, that you find the landing site of the earlier expedition. The sextant we brought should help immensely. Do you have the sextant on you? There should be a sextant in the hold. If you learn the coordinates of a place you wish to go, the sextant will lead you there. Really? It'll, it'll like, hop out of my pocket and, and walk and I can just follow it? That's, that's not how it works, does it? Damn it. Why you gotta make everything so hard? The location for a place should be uh, calculated using the sextant. It will give you a set of two numbers, which you can then use to find the spot again later. The coordinates for the earlier landing site, for example, are 28 south, 153 west. Cool. Um, oh, yeah, let's, let's ask about your name. Tesla, Nikola Tesla. Fine Serbian name. He smiles companionably. Indeed it is. Uh, what can you tell me about your job? It will be my job to monitor the communications from Earth through the giant reflectors. Communications? Can we get a Tesla coil? really like to shoot things with lightning. Communication must be maintained with the Earth to pr prove that my mission is a success. I will take care of it personally and guarantee its accuracy. Can you tell me about the reflectors? Communications are achieved through the means of light reflection by huge mirrored surfaces. We will set them up if they are needed, and I will monitor them personally to ensure commu emergency communications. Good. Uh, what else did he s Oops. Alright, I forget what other words that he uh, mentioned. Let's see if we talk to him again, if he'll uh, give them to us. Okay, utensil, door, and capsule. Utensil. Yes, we may have need of some during our travels. You should ask Mr. Garrett what we have available. And door? I have tried the door. Yes, it seems to be jammed. Please do ask Mr. Garrett specifically for something with which to open the hatch. I think I can do that. And what can you tell me about this capsule that we're in? Indeed, it has worked even better than I expected. It is re re rewarding to see my theories proven correct. Okay. Certainly, my friend. We are both busy. We will speak again later. Alright. You see a pipe organ? Why is there a pipe organ in here? Yay, if only I knew how to play music. Look, you see an oxygenated air machine. An oxygenated air machine. Yes. You heard me correct. You see a middle-aged man dressed in black. Greetings, my friends. Let me check you over while you're here. Can't be too careful, you know. After completing his examinations, Blood proclaims, No one here is in need of my services. 
What's your name? Dr. C.L. Blood, at your service. You have a really apt name for being a doctor. Or maybe a not-so-apt name, now that I think about it. What is your job? I am a physician by profession. I heal those who are injured, and I specialize in the diseases of the lungs. Oh, lungs. Why can you tell me about the lungs? I have promoted the use of oxygenized air, which I feel is critical in the treatment of ailments of the respiratory system. Oxygenized air! Tell me about this, uh, this thing you mentioned. Yes, it is imperative for survival that one have sufficient oxygen. Without such, the brain ceases to function properly. I fear that while on Mars, we shall suffer from oxygen deprivation. Well, can you tell me about oxygen deprivation? If you carry, a, carry on in an oxygen-poor environment, you will notice a marked reduction in your physical strength and agility. Furthermore, the lack of oxygen flow to the brain will most certainly cause you to suffer a reduction of your mental faculties. Certainly, Elmendrena, this is not a manner in which you should operate for any length of time. Alright, what can you tell me about your uh, job as physician? You know, a doctor. Admittedly, I have fallen from favor in the medical community, as my innovations are too modern for those who favor the status quo. At any rate, I still maintain my practice and operate an office at 27 Bond Street, New York. What can you tell me about your innovations? Okay. So, he, uh, he promotes oxygenized air. Yes, yes, oxygenized air. Let's go ahead and open this door. Oh, that hatch, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, find a candlestick, a mug, a place setting, a place setting, and a place setting. Somehow I don't think we're going to need any of that. Find a crystal glass. Crystal glass, fine china plate, glass pitcher, wine bottle, and a wine bottle. I don't think we're going to need any of that either. I am going to need some of these things. Let's get the wool pants. Let's get the uh, wool overcoat. Man's shoes. Muffler. Pith helmet. Just like old Daniel Boone used to wear. And work gloves. Let's go ahead and equip all of those things. I'm sure those... Shoes are quite comfortable, being man's shoes and all. Okay, got a lantern and lots of uh, oil. Um, Spectre! Go ahead and grab all of that. Lots of knives, machete, and a saber. Okay. Well, for now, I like the idea of being equipped with those. I suppose I don't need uh, both lanterns. Let's get rid of the uh, one of the lanterns. Okay. Now, uh, that wooden crate is nailed shut, so we can't open that just yet. Let's go ahead and open that. We'll get that uh, spyglass and sextant. Tesla's reflector kit. I don't think we can do anything with that. Can't be used. Yeah. Let's go ahead and open those. Ah, wool dress, cape, woman's shoes, silk scarf, pith helmet, lady silk gloves. Oh. So I guess there's uh, men's equipment and women's equipment there. I suppose I could have... Let's see. Go with the silk uh, scarf as well. And lady silk gloves and women's shoes. Why not? Pith helmet is uh, fine. Can I grab that and that? All right, let's see. What do we have in the backpack? Um, these can go to 
Spectre. So we got a tinderbox. We got uh, a hatchet. Let's uh, actually move the tinderbox to Warren and the lantern to Warren. He's Warren. He's not spe He's not Johan. He's totally Warren. We got a hatchet. We got a ball peen hammer. We got another machete. And we got a folded tent. That's pretty important. Get out of that. Go ahead and move the backpack to Warren. And inside the carpet bag, we have a sledgehammer. We have pliers. We have a wrench. And we have tongs. We want those. Those are good. We keep those. Uh, how are we doing on stones? 23 out of 36. 18 out of 32. I don't really need another lamp again. Alright, let's talk to Garrett. He, uh, Tesla did say something about him having a uh, potential utensil. I didn't want to use, I wanted to talk. Talk to Cowboy! He looks kind of familiar. You see a weathered man in his 30s. Howdy, Elmandretta. Anything I can help you with? Uh, what's your name? My name's Dallas Garrett. You just holler if you need anything. What is your job? Well, now that we're here, I reckon I'm gonna be keeping an eye on things, keeping an eye on the home fires here. I'm a pretty good shot, if need be. He pulls out a six-shooter and twirls it expertly, slamming it back in the holster with a confident grin. You wouldn't happen to be related to any particular king, would you? Or game designer, maybe? Ancestor of them? Something like that? Um, Tesla said something about a utensil. Yes, madame. I do carry a lot of different tools with me, and I know how to use them. Got me a pry bar and some other doodads. Speaking of equipment, one thing you might want to, might ought to do is check out the hold over there. See if see what we have in the way of gear. I tell they've got everything we need in there. Do you know anything about the gear in there? If you got everything out of the hold, you think you you'll be needing. You got everything we brought along for you. You might be especially sure to check for that there sextant. Could be pretty useful. Yes, I I, got, I did get the sextant. Yep, that should be in there in that there crate over by the yonder wall. Pretty good for finding your way around. Um, can I get the pry bar? I see your pry bar works like a charm on anything that's stuck together. You need this for anything? Just ask. Uh, I do kind of need it. Well, madame, I have this here pry bar that should fix the problem. Would you like to give her a try? Yes. Right. Here you go. You just put that at the edge of the door and pull. Should come off real easy with this thing. Why, well, thank you. Sure enough. Y'all come back any time. I'm, I'm sure I, I won't. I'm sure I won't. Um, well, first of all, before we exit, let's, let's see if we can use the pry bar in this nailed crate. Sweet! You pried the nails out of the crate. Find a book, a book, and a book. Why are the books locked up? Alright, I'm carrying too much already. Let's go ahead and move some of these into the carpet bag. We might be getting some more people, so. Alright, let's see what books did we get. Guess I have to use the book. The Aeneid! The Aeneid by Virgil. This book is in Latin. Tante molis arat Romanum condiere gentem. Uh, that, that's that's very helpful there. I guess we did need some uh, reading material, but why is the book... Why was the crate nailed shut? Voyage au Centre de la Terre. Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. This book is in French. It is obviously some kind of speculative fiction. Totally. It's definitely speculative fiction. And what about this? Catherine the Great, an informal biography by Roger Ockerod. 
This well-read book is full of scandal and political maneuvering. The innocent and pretty Sophia grows up to be the notorious and brilliant Tsarina of Russia. Okay. And this book has... Tables of Logarithms by Charles Babbage. One day his name will grace a computer game store, and then it will no longer do that once the store chain closes. This copy was signed by the author. It reads, To my good friend George Peacock, Till we find a better way. Charles Babbage, 1822. Sweet. Let's take that home with us. The Book of the Sword by Richard, Richard Burton. I have only one wish that reader and reviewer can grant, namely a fair field and no favor for certain advanced views of Egyptology. It is my conviction that this study, still in its infancy, will greatly modify almost all our preconceived no views of archaeological history. Okay. I don't want to get, I want to drop that book. I can drop that. Oops. All right, let's go ahead and use uh, this pry bar here on that crate, and then we'll use it, and we get some various uh, utensils, which I don't think we need many of. No, I don't need a scythe. I don't know that we need a pickaxe, but I think a shovel would be helpful. And Nelly, you can have the shovel. Use the pry bar on that. Ooh, bullets! <laughs> Alright, let's see, what do we have? Uh, we have 100 rifle rounds, we have 40 shotgun shells, and 100 pistol rounds. Use pry bar on that crate. Use that crate. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, what do we have? We have a Belgian Combine. It is set to combination. Um, so R would be rifle. S would be shotgun. C is combination. We have a revolver and we have a rifle. Move the revolver to uh, Warren. Move all of the pistol rounds to Warren. Let's give 30 of the pistol rounds to Nelly. It's range, range, yeah. I suppose he doesn't need that anymore. And I suppose I can uh, go ahead and use the uh, Belgian Combine. Um, actually, let's give the rifle to uh, Warren. And for now, Nelly can have the uh, a second pistol. Okay. I think we're uh, ready to get the heck out of here. But we'll do that in the next episode. See you then!